Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another PS3 tutorial. So in this one, we're going to be looking at how to set up PS3 Hen on firmware 4.91 or lower, which is a tethered jailbreak designed for people who cannot install the full custom firmware, which is the untethered jailbreak for the PS3. But that only works on the fat model PS3s and the early slim models, whereas the late slim model PS3s and the super slims do not support custom firmware. So for you guys, we have got PS3 Hen instead, which is a tethered jailbreak, but it works on all PS3 models, and it gives you pretty much the same kind of functionality that you get with custom firmware anyway. So you're not really missing out on too much if you're using PS3 Hen instead of custom firmware. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to set this up. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is head over to the settings menu and scroll down to system settings and press X to select it. We're then going to select the automatic update option and make sure that is turned off. We're then going to scroll down to the display what's new section, press X on that and make sure that is also turned off. We're then going to scroll down to our system information, press X on that. And you can see we're on system software version 4.91. So you can follow this video on any firmware up to 4.91. So 4.91 or lower, you'll be able to follow this video. And of course, if nothing changes in any future updates like 4.92, 4.93, then I'll update the title and description of the video so that you'll know that you can follow the video on those future versions as well. So from here, we can then press circle to go back out to our menu here. So at this point, we need to get things set up on the computer because we need to install our hybrid firmware. Okay, so if we switch over to the computer, first of all, you need to get yourself a USB drive and plug it into your PC. And then we're going to download a software called Rufus. So we're going to just download it right here. You can download this executable file, copy it somewhere on your computer, like your desktop. We also want to download an MD5 checker. So I've got this one here on getmd5checker.com. All the download links will be down in the video description. So click the button here to download it to your computer. From there, we're also going to need to download the hybrid firmware from PSX Place from this post, which will also be linked down in the description. So you can see that the hybrid firmware here from Juni has been linked below. So you can download it here or you can download it right here. So click the link, download the hybrid firmware. And then we also want to copy the MD5 hash that's linked below, which is the correct hash for this file. So we're gonna also right click and copy that hash file. And then if I go back to my desktop, I've got my hybrid firmware, my MD5 checker, and my Rufus application. So you wanna plug in your USB drive to your computer and we're gonna run Rufus. And we're going to list USB hard drives if your USB device is not automatically detected. And you want to select your USB drive from the list up here. We also want to change the boot selection to non-bootable. The partition scheme needs to be set to MBR and our file system here needs to be set to FAT32. It can be large FAT32 or regular FAT32. It must be FAT32 though. So select that option and then click start. Remember that this will erase the drive. So back up any data that was on your USB drive before doing this. And then we can click OK to reformat the drive in FAT32 format. So once that's done, we can close out of Rufus. And then if we take a look here, we've got our USB drive on our file explorer. And if I right click and go to properties, you can see the file system is set to FAT32, which means the PS3 will be able to detect it. So we're gonna go into our USB drive. We can delete these files that it puts in here. And we need to make a number of folders in this USB drive. So in the root of the USB drive, we're gonna create a new folder called PS3 in uppercase characters. And then inside that folder, we're gonna create another folder called update which is also going to be in uppercase characters. And then inside that folder, we're gonna copy our hybrid firmware update file inside. So that is what we want. And then we need to rename this file by right clicking and clicking on rename. And you want to rename it. So it's just called ps3updat.pup, not update, updat. So ps3updat.pup. Now you should also go to view and go to show and make sure that file name extensions is ticked. And that way you can actually see the .pup extension. So you can see that you've named the file correctly. So this is the structure that you need to have. You've got your USB drive, you've got your PS3 folder inside, then the update folder inside that. 
and then you've got the update file inside the update folder and everything needs to be named exactly as you see here with the ps3 folder the update folder and the update file in order for the ps3 to detect the update file so the last thing we need to do is verify the md5 hash you want to do this once it's actually copied to the usb drive so we're going to run our md5 checker that we downloaded so we'll run md5 checker.exe and we're just going to drag the update file from our USB drive into MD5 checker. If you're not able to drag and drop the file, you can just click the add button up here and then browse for it manually. And then what we want to do is double click on the MD5 hash and paste in the MD5 hash that we copied from PSX place. And if it says it's the same, as you can see here, it says it's the same. That means that the file has not been corrupted and it should be just fine to install on the PS3. So once you've verified all of that information, we can now eject the drive and plug it in to our PS3. Now you want to plug it into the rightmost USB port on the front of the PS3 if possible, which is the kind of top USB port if you have it vertical. So I'm going to plug in my USB drive to that USB port. Obviously, if that USB port is damaged or broken on your PS3, you can use another uh, USB port, but it's recommended to use the rightmost USB port if it's available. So back on the PS3, we're going to go back into our settings and we're going to select the system update option and we're going to select update via storage media. And then wait for that and you can see it shows up there 4.91 hybrid and exploitable. We're going to say yes to install it and let that install the system update. Now, if you run into any errors during this process, any kind of errors that stop you from installing the update file, then bear with me because I will show you another way to install the update, which is a little bit more reliable. Now, typically you will not notice any difference after this firmware update has been installed. It should still just be exactly as it was before. Okay, so for me, as you can see there, the update installed without any problems. If you did run into any problems installing the system update, you should try installing it using safe mode instead, which tends to be more reliable. So in order to boot the system into safe mode, you need to first of all turn off the PS3 and then hold down the power button to turn it back on and keep the power button held down until you hear it beep twice in rapid succession like this. And if you don't hear that, it will just turn itself off. So just repeat the process until you hear that double beep. And then that means it's booting into safe mode. So once you get into safe mode here, you'll have to plug in your PS3 controller with the charge cable into the PS3 and then press the PS button. And then we can scroll down to option number six for system update and press X on that. And then we have to press start and select at the same time. And it will check for the update file on the USB drive. Okay, and now it is preparing to update. Okay, so here we go in safe mode. We can press the PS button here to install the hybrid and exploitable firmware. Okay, and then we get the usual disclaimer. We have to accept. Press X to start, and now it's installing the system update through safe mode. Takes a bit longer to do it this way, but this is a more reliable way of installing the system update. So if you were running into any errors installing the system update on the normal XMB, on the normal PS3 home menu, then this may solve the problem by installing it in safe mode instead. Okay, so now that I'm back after updating from safe mode, those are the two ways that you can use to update to the hybrid firmware. Now it is also recommended to install the hybrid firmware twice so that it's in both of your firmware slots on your PS3. So just use whatever method you used to install the update the first time and use that same method to install the hybrid firmware a second time and let that run through again a second time. Now I've already installed the hybrid firmware twice, once uh, using the normal system update option here in the menu and a second time in safe mode. So mine is installed twice. So once you've installed it twice, we're going to head over to our internet browser and press X to select that in our network settings. And then from there, we're going to press the start button on our controller and we're going to search for the website ps3exploit.me. You can see I've already got it here in my suggestions. So ps3exploit.me, press start to head to that website. And that will take us over here. We're going to click OK. And then we're going to head up to ps3hen and we're going to select hen auto installer. So press X on that. And that will take us over to this page here. It will download that file there as well. So we can press back. Now we're not going to run this just yet because we want to make sure that we get the web browser running as lightweight as possible. So it has as much memory as possible so that 
we're less likely to run into any errors when we try to run the hen installer. So to do this, the first thing we're going to do is press the select button on our PS3 controller and add this page to our bookmarks, the PS3 hen auto installer. Then we'll press circle to go back. We'll then press the triangle button and we're going to go to tools, press X on that and scroll down to delete cookies and press X and say yes to delete the cookies. Then press triangle and go to tools again and scroll down to delete search history. Press X on that and again yes to clear the search history. Then again triangle tools, go down to delete the cache. Select that option and say yes to delete the cache. And then finally we're going to go to tools again with triangle and then go down to delete the authentication information and say yes to delete that as well. Then we're going to press triangle again and we're going to go down to tools. We're going to go to home page and we're going to select use a blank page with X and then click OK. And then that's got us all set up here to make sure that the browser is going to run as lightweight as possible. We also want to press triangle again and go down to tools once more. And we want to go to confirm browser close and we want to change that to off. So make sure that is switched off. And that's everything that you need to do there. So from here, we can press circle to exit the browser. Then we're going to reopen the browser again with X. And this will just take us to our blank page. And then we're going to press the select button again and select the option for our bookmarked page. Press X on that. And that will take us back to the auto installer. We can say overwrite and save, I guess. Or you can just say don't save if it's already downloaded the file previously. And then we should be good. So from here, all we need to do is run the auto install hen. So we're going to press X to auto install hen. And there we go. Auto hen installer initialized successfully. It's now installing. Now, if you did not get the hen initialization successful message, if you got any errors while trying to do this, then all you should do is just turn your PS3 off, turn it back on again, go back on the web browser and try and load it again and repeat the process until it eventually works. It won't necessarily work the first time for everybody. Welcome to PS3 Hen 3.3.0. And that is it right there. It's now downloading the file. We're just going to wait for this to do its thing. So it's installing PS3 Hen right now. It will require a restart once this is finished. Okay, so once it says download completed, we can press circle and there it goes. Installation complete, prepare for reboot. So I guess it's going to try and reboot us automatically here. Now, if it does fail to reboot automatically, just restart the PS3 yourself. And what we should see here when it reboots is that PS3 Hen should be enabled. There we go. We've got our PS3 Hen logo when we boot up the PS3. Now, this is a tethered exploit, remember, which basically means that it doesn't automatically run hen for you. You have to run it yourself every time you reboot the PS3. And because of the way that we've set things up here, it will automatically take us to the enable hen option every time we reboot the PS3. And all you have to do is press X on enable hen and this will run the hen enabler, which should only take a couple of seconds here. So there we go, hen. A few seconds later, we get welcome to PS3 hen. And now hen is up and running and we have access to our package manager to install our homebrew applications. And we now have our PS3 jailbroken using PS3 Hen. So that is the main downside with PS3 Hen, is that you have to run this enable Hen option every time you reboot the PS3. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to load your homebrew applications. However, it only takes about five seconds to load. So it really isn't that big of a deal in my opinion, but uh, that's what makes custom firmware superior because you don't have to do that. But uh, yeah, as you can see, we now have our PS3 jailbroken. We have access to the package manager, which allows us to install homebrew applications. So let's go ahead and install a homebrew app as a test here. So if we switch back over to our computer, you can download PS3 homebrew apps from brewology.com. So store.brewology.com. Link will be in the description. So if we try and install something like Multiman here, one of the most popular, you know, homebrew managers for the PS3, you can see here it says that it supports... 4.91 right here, including Hen. So Hen is supported. So we can just download the unofficial version that says it is for PS3 Hen. So some homebrew apps will have a separate version for PS3 Hen. 
and that's the one that you're going to want to download in this case multi-man we want the version that is designed for hen so that's the one that we would download other homebrew apps uh, have a version that supports hen and custom firmware so you don't need to download a separate version so for example if we take a look here at something like iris man so with iris man you can see here we've got just a full edition here for 4.91 but if we go to the release notes it says it supports custom firmware and hybrid firmware which means it supports uh, ps3 hen as well so depending on the homebrew app you want to check to see if it has a separate version for hen if it does make sure you're downloading that version and not the version for custom firmware other homebrew apps will have a main version that supports ps3 hen and custom firmware and you can just download and install that so anyway i've gone ahead and downloaded that unofficial multi-man for ps3 hen and i'm just going to copy that package file to the root of my usb drive the same usb drive that i have the hybrid firmware update on so i can just copy any package files for ps3 to the root of a usb drive and then you can plug that usb drive back into the ps3 and install it with the package manager so back on the ps3 i'll select package manager install package files and I'll select the standard from your storage device, which is my USB drive. And then we have our multi-man package file right here for PS3 Hen. I can select it and let that install. So here's us loading our first homebrew application onto the system. Installed successfully. There we are, multi-man. Let's try and run it here to show that we do have our PS3 jailbroken with the ability to run homebrew applications. And of course, I forgot that uh, multi-man makes you sign your soul away here when you launch it for the first time. So we'll say yes and get that set up. And here we are applying the theme. And here we are, Multiman is now booting up. So as you can see right here, we have full blown homebrew running on our PS3 now on the latest firmware. So the great thing about PS3 Hen is this will work on any PS3, on any firmware version. You can install the 4.91 hybrid firmware and then run PS3 Hen installer and get a full-on jailbreak essentially for your PS3 on any PS3 version. So really, really handy stuff. Now I will also have a tutorial coming soon or it might already be out by the time you're watching this video on how to install the full custom firmware on your PS3 as well, which is generally considered to be a bit of a better jailbreak because it gives you a bit more features and it's a untethered jailbreak. So you don't have to enable Hen every time you reboot the PS3, but it only works on select PS3 models. But if you're interested in that, then check the link down in the description to that tutorial for the full custom firmware. Of course, big thanks to all of the developers who made this possible for 4.91. You've got Escorted, Juni for the hybrid firmware, and all of the other developers that are involved in constantly improving PS3 Hen. But that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.